What's up, nail friends? In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you how to do encapsulated 3D flowers in acrylic. So I thought that'd be fun to share with you guys and to show you how I did this whole set. So please ignore all the faded off henna on her hands. She just got married last week and it hadn't all come off before her appointment. So just ignore it. <laughs> Let's get started. <music> Okay, to start this set, I've already filed down her past set and prepped her nails and applied primer and all of that good stuff. And now I'm applying a big bead of Glitter Bells Sugared Almonds. This is a new cover pink in my studio and I really like it. And I really like the formula of the Glitter Bells cover pinks and white. They're all really nice. So here I'm using my Crystal Nails A6 brush. This is a pretty small brush. I learned on a smaller brush, so I just find smaller brushes a little bit easier for me to work with, especially when I'm doing small things like this. And later on, you'll see me switch to a bigger brush. But for now, I'm just using the A6. And so I've applied that cover pink right at the cuticle area, and then I dragged it down the nail. And now I'm just using the point of that A6 brush to create my smile line. So I'm doing this in reverse French style. So this is where you create your cover pink nail bed and then you create kind of a ledge. You file it out and then you add the color on the tip and it just creates a really nice crisp smile line. So I decided to add a little bit more of that Glitter Bells sugared almond on top just so I can make sure that my ledge is big enough and deep enough for that color to go under at the tip. On her ring finger here, I'm using Sugar Almond from Glitter Bells Still. And then I also decided to mix in the Glitter Bells Soft Cover Pink in the shimmer, just to give it some glitter. But it really didn't matter as this whole nail does get covered. So you're really not gonna see that. You could just do anything under this. I just wanted a nice thin base of cover pink before doing any 3D design. I did switch hands and repeat the process on her other hand just so both hands are the same and then I came back to this hand and now that nail is dry and I can do my 3D flowers. So I'm using my Ugly Duckling 3D brush here and I've mixed the Snowdrops white with the same purple that I'm going to be using this whole set. So this one is called Cruise Ship from Glam and Glitz. It is a really pretty glitter purple. So I just do teeny tiny beads of these colors mixed together, so double dipping. So first I pick up the white, and then I dip it into the purple, and then I place the bead on the nail. Then I wipe off my brush a lot. Make sure that you have no liquid in your brush. And every time you pat down, if it sticks to your brush or doesn't stay directly where you put it, then it's still too wet and you need to wipe off your brush. So you'll see me wiping off my brush quite often. And when doing petals and flowers like this, I use the belly of my brush and not really the tip. You'll see me use the tip of the brush when I'm doing the center of the flower in just a minute. So when I put my first bead down, I did make that petal really flat because that's the petal that's getting overlapped. So my second petal here is overlapping that petal. And then the other side that I'm working on right now is gonna be really flat because that's the side that gets overlapped by the third petal. So I just keep working on that until I'm happy with it and it's dry enough. And then I work on the third petal. So you never wanna add another petal in when your other petals haven't dried yet because it'll just turn into one big mess. So here I'm just cutting that bead with the point of my brush and then I'm pushing it into place with the belly of my brush and overlapping those other petals. Also when doing encapsulated 3D flowers, make sure that you make it really flat so that you don't file off too much of your design when you are finished filing. So now we're going for the center bead here and I usually do two center beads. So I do one and I kind of cut it in half and create another petal, but it's right in the center. And then I do an even smaller one. So here, that's what I'm doing. I'm just patting this into place and I make sure that this one's really small because you don't want this to go over top of the end of any of your other petals or else it'll be too big and look like not a flower. So make sure this one's really small. When that one's a little bit dry, now I'm going in with my center petal. So I kind of stick my brush in and remove liquid over and over and over again until it's dry enough to move into place. You wanna make sure that this one's quite dry because it can run into that fourth center petal and ruin your entire design. So I just spend a lot of time making sure that this center petal is really defined. And I do that using the very point of my brush.
for this nail, I did want it to be covered in 3D flowers. So I am doing two side flowers on the side here. So they're not uh, with all three petals. They're just side flowers. So I sped this up just to share that with you. And then we'll move on to the next bit in a second. So for the middle finger, I'm doing this all with that really pretty purple cruise ship color from Glam & Glitz. So before I apply that on top of the nail, I'm just doing a really thin layer of clear acrylic. Just so when she gets her nails redesigned, she has a clear base underneath. That'll be a little bit easier to file down. So I take that cruise ship color and I place it near the cuticle area. I'm still using the A6 brush. And I just pat it into place around the cuticle and then drag it down the nail. I found today this particular color was sticking to my brush a little bit. I don't know if it's just because my nail room was cold or warm, I'm not sure, but normally this color is pretty easy to work with. It's a little difficult today though, as you can see me moving it around and it's kind of like sticking to my brush and stuff. So the glitter I'm putting on top is also from Glitter Bells. This is one of their little flakies that they have and this one shines purple. So I thought that was really pretty and it would be really great in this set. So to place that on the nail, I just dip my brush in monomer, clear acrylic, and then I pick up some of the flakes and push it down onto the nail. And then I just like to pat it down and make sure that they're flat so that nothing sticks up when I encapsulate this nail. So for her pinky and her thumb, they both match. I am doing a marble design. So I picked up the Glitter Bell Snowdrop White with the cruise ship and I start around the cuticle area and I make sure the cuticle is good and then I just feather this down the nail. Once I'm happy with my cuticle bead, I pick up another bead with those two colors mixed and I kind of do diagonal design whenever I do any kind of marble. I just think it looks really pretty. So I've also picked up the Glitter Bells Soft Cover Pink in Shimmer and I'm putting that through the nail too. And because her nails are white underneath, you're not going to get any color showing through. So it creates this really cool look. And then I'm applying some glitter here and this is also from Glitter Bells and the whole design idea I had was based off the purple glitter that I'm adding here. I'm also adding this clear glitter too. So pretty. So I will link this down below and I do have a coupon code now for Glitter Bells for you guys to get a discount. So don't forget to open up my description box and take a look at all the items that I have used in this set and I will link them down in there. Once I get all the glitter on that nail, I realized I did want to add some more of that clear glitter into the set. So I just applied it on the nude parts of the encapsulated nail. Before finishing her thumb, I'm just coming back to that cover pink nail that has that smile line. And I'm just crispening up that line with my 180 grit hand file and just really creating that ledge. Make sure to dust off the nail before applying anything else onto the nail. Just dust is the devil, so take it all off. So I'm just applying a little bit of the cruise ship color onto the tip of this nail. And then I'll be applying glitter along the smile line. You can see here how deep that ledge is, which is perfect because I want to push the glitter up and not have it overlap at all and not have this nail be too thick or anything. So you really want that deep ledge there so that you can get your nice crisp smile line. And then I'm just picking up a bead of clear acrylic and then picking up both those glitters that I used on her pinky and just placing it along that line and making sure it's nice and flat and perfect so that when I encapsulate this nail, I don't accidentally file off too much or any glitter. So here I've just sped this up, but I'm just creating another marble nail on her thumb that matches the pinky. So 
so now I'm just encapsulating all these nails, but I thought I'd show you guys how to encapsulate your 3D flower nail. So instead of starting at the cuticle, I always start at the tip when doing 3D nails, encapsulating these nails. And I'm just applying a medium sized bead at the tip and it's really wet. So you'll want it to be a little bit wetter in order to fill in all the gaps that are there because of your 3D. And it'll help get rid of all those little air bubbles that you can get when you're encapsulating stuff like this. So I start at the tip and I pat it into place and then I do a bead right at the cuticle area. So this nail will be thicker than all the other nails until I finish file. So it's only just to encapsulate all of that work that just went into it. So the brush I'm using here, I did switch to my crystal nails brush and this is the extreme brush and I'd say it's comparable to around a size 12. So I'm just gonna quickly go over finish filing because I do this in every video. So just taking a small cone carbide bit here and I'm just using this to get nice and flush around the cuticle area. And I will link this down below because you guys always ask me which bits I use. So check my description box to find the exact ones that I'm using. And then I've switched here to a coarse flame bit. I'm just using this to debulk the nail right at the apex area and just going over top of that whole nail just to slightly debulk the nail before hand filing. Then I switch to a hand file. This is a 180 grit hand file and I do the rest of my finish filing with this. So I start at the side walls and make sure that my nail is nice and straight and tapered. And then I'm going around the cuticle area and when you're using a grit this soft, you don't really have to worry about cutting your client but still be gentle. And then I go up and down at the free edge. So I'm just using this to smooth out that nail, make sure that to take away all the extra bulk and to really define my shape. So I take a look down the barrel of the nail often and then I check to see if there's any sides that need to be filed a little bit more. And I check my side to make sure my apex is still in place. And I just spent a lot of time finish filing. And I found that it's been really successful for me to get nice shape using spending a lot of time doing finish filing. After I'm done finish filing, I come in with a white buffing block and I use this to get rid of any scratches. So now it's crystal time. So I got some new crystals in from Crystal Princess that I wanted to share in this set. So the middle one here is the Swarovski Flame Flatback in AB. And the size of this one is seven by five millimeter. And the glue that I use to apply my crystals is the Ugly Duckling Stick It. On the side crystals here, I'm using the AB Raindrop Flatback Rhinestone Crystals. And I'm using the smaller size. This is 1.7 by 6 millimeter. They do have a bigger size as well. And I'm using AB Crystals and the purple ones, which I think are Light Amethyst. And I decided to add some of these little cool little beads. You can get these on eBay or Amazon or anything. They're just little beads. They're not anything special. Once this entire nail is done, I make sure that it's all even before curing it. So that's what I like about the Ugly Duckling Stick It. You can play with it, move it around before curing it, and they last the entire time. I actually really love this Ugly Duckling glue. So if you guys are looking for something to glue your crystals on, definitely check that out. And I'm just applying another different design using the bigger raindrop crystals on this nail and uh, the small ones on the side. I'm just doing like my own random little pattern. On our pinkies and our thumbs, I just added the light amethyst and the AB crystals going from the cuticle down like a little line. And then just a little cluster on her pointer finger as well. After I've got all the crystals secured and in place and cured, now is top coat time. We can really see how these nails shine. So I'm using my Kira Sky No Wipe Top Coat. So this one is in the black bottle and I'm just applying this only on the nail and you don't want to get this on top of your crystals. I've said that before, it'll ruin the shine, but you can put this on top of the beads and I encourage you to, to keep them in place and help them from changing color or anything. But I found doing it this way is really successful to keep those tiny little beads in place. So I just apply a little bit of the top coat on top of those beads and then give that a full cure. And here is the finished design. I hope you guys like this set. I really like this set. 
And I had so much fun designing these. She let me do whatever I wanted and I love doing that. It's so much fun. So if you guys like this video, please leave me a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the bell next to the subscription button so that you can be notified whenever I post a video and be part of my notification squad. Thanks for watching. Keep your nails long and your glitter strong.